Another way to do this is something that I like. This is not using a native plugin. We're going to click stereo because the track that we are working on is stereo. So this is another way to do it. Once again, if you start it uh, with this track, this was the first one you have pulled up. You pull in that track. Now this is called F6 RTA Stereo, and this plugin is by Waves. We're gonna jump into this plugin pretty heavy, but for right now, what we're doing is we are side chaining a kick. We want that kick more clear, and we wanted to hit. So doing it this way, this will be side chaining the kick using EQ. So. You take this kick here, once you find your kick channel, you got it on your mixer channel, it's routed once again. Make sure it's routed to the channel that you want it to affect. We got it on the effect channel, and I like this one because it's a lot easier. We don't have to, you know, go in and do too much settings as far as this. We literally can come in here. Uh, we want to, any of the section where the kick is hitting that, we can affect, so. We're definitely going to be down at the lower end. We're going to kick extent exterior. The interior is here. The exterior is here. We're going to click exterior and exterior exterior here. And this particular frequency range, that should be the kick. We're going to press four as well, just to be safe. We shouldn't have too much up here, but we're going to click it anyway. So these particular bands are going to be affected when that kick hits. But this way with the EQ does it in a more transparent way, in my opinion. You don't really hear the pumping. Uh, it just kind of ducks those frequencies out of the way and goes right back. So, had the kick hitting. If you hear, so you got that threshold, this is basically, you know, it's not a compressor, but these are some of the same controls. You have that threshold threshold that you're going to pull back we're going to go about again 30 right and then you have your attack so that's how fast it takes to kick in we want that at about zero zero we can't do zero so the lowest we can go on this is 0 0.5 and then how long do we want it to stay a kick is fast, so we want a fast release. So let's try something like, uh, you know, maybe 40 milliseconds. Because we want it to kick in fast, hold and go back out. And remember, we don't want like a pumping effect and holding. We just want that kick to be, when the kick hits, we want it to be able to shine through. So we're going to do the same thing here. 40, 0 0.5. Put a threshold back at 30. And we're affecting these bands because essentially, we go over here, let's make sure. You go over here, you look at your kick. Pull it up on another, uh, we're gonna do mono because this is a mono signal. Well, this kick is like hitting all the way across the board. But specific, specifically where we wanted that, the prominence of this kick is gonna be from that one to that four band. We can actually take this and possibly come up here and knock off, you know, those DB in. That right there clears up that kick a little bit. It's depending on where you want it at. What do you like? What sounds good? So this clears up some of the bass, you know, for it to go. So I'm going to leave it at 40 and see where we get. Let me put my headphones all the way on. And let's back down on the actual kick a little bit from the top end. Let's come down and say a thousand. I feel like that focuses in more right there. It makes that kick just kind of pop. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the stereo and we want to affect these sections. So what we did was we took that kick. We kind of sculpted that kick just a little bit. Sounds good. We just wanted to take some of the frequencies away that were the frequencies that are away that weren't like, you know, we really don't need those. Take a little bit off the bottom, 
take a lot off the top so those other elements in the mix can shine. Again, this is taste. This is what I would do. Uh, this is how I would do it. You you could do whatever you like. So it's up to you. But there's, again, there's like general, you know, rules that you kind of follow. The main thing, though, regardless of whatever is make it sound good. If it sounds good to you and other people like it and, you know, like, man, that thing is hitting. That's the that's what you want. You want it to sound good. That is however you get to that point. Get to that point, whatever you need to do. This is how I would do it. This is how other people do it. Similar things. Um, it all depends on you. You can use a combination of one or two or three things. It's just what you use and how you do with you to get to the desired effect. So, I'm going to come over here. Let's say we sculpted this kick. Got it hitting, you know, a little cleaner, better. So, we're controlling this channel here. We want these instruments to get out of the way. And you don't have to do it on an instrument track. You can use it on the bass bus. You can use it on a miscellaneous bus. You can use it on a drum bus. Um, I don't know why you want to use it on a drum bus. But if you did want to use it on a drum bus and do like a separate channel, you could. But the main thing is getting whatever out of the way so you can have this kick shine. Or whatever instrument you want to shine. So I'm going to come here. Like I said, these one, two, three, and four, that's what we want to affect it. So they are good. We're going to go ahead and put in the settings for this 40. We want it to hit and hit quick 0 0.5. And then we want it to hold just for a little bit, but it let go relatively quick, quickly. Boom. Go down to 30, negative 30. You don't have to be exact on every channel. You can type it in if you like. That's what another thing I like about this plugin. And here. So you really can get, you know, down to the nitty gritty of your settings if you want to. Don't too much watch the graph. The graph is there visually, but don't mix off of the graph. Mix off of what you hear in your ears. So, got everything on extension or exterior. Let's see. So, the last band one, we actually don't have to worry about. Like, we've cut that. So, two. We're going to have to come down on two just slightly, a lot more. Maybe 40. Let's see what happens. Let's come down just a little bit more. 45. That's so clean to me. Let's turn it off. Remember, it's already hitting these just little subtle moves. Watch this. To me, that's it. Let's go a little further. Remember, we don't want much. We want a little bit. So let's come back down 35. And then on the 4, we're going to come back down on 35 as well. That's so clean. So we're going to do it on and off. On and off so y'all can hear the difference. Oh my gosh, that kick is hitting. Those other sounds are popping out right now, and uh, we're going to get into that more later. But let's uh, do a double effect. A double effect. Should we do it? So, should we, should we use the limiter or compressor? It's for the limiter, but we're using the compressor side of it. Should we use the compressor and the EQ to side chain the kick to the instruments? Let's just see what happens. Let's see what would happen. I 
Another thing is the order that you have your plugins in, you know, EQ, compression, compression, EQ, the order that you have them in, in my opinion, it makes a difference. I, there's sometimes that I, I've used similar things and I'm like, it's not doing it for me. And I'll literally move, you know, the order around and it's, it's there. I like the limiter first. Now, oh, excuse me. Now, this is probably, honestly, a lot more than you want to have as far as getting that kick out of the way, but it's a desired uh, effect, but this is like a stream. So it's letting you know that it will get out of the way. That you can, you know, get that kick to hit, get it out of the way. So, what we want to do is, most likely, I say, I would probably turn off the limiter. Take the EQ, use the EQ, EQ route. But I would back off my settings a little bit. Again, we cut some of the stuff out so the kick is hitting through pretty good. So, we come back down, you know, 32. Let's say negative 32. And then on here, same thing, negative 32. And on here, so this one is the one that's really, most likely really giving us that pop, making it shine, so. I'm gonna leave that one at 45, come back down maybe 44, but I think we wanna keep that where it's at. This one really don't matter too much. Like I said, we're not really we're not really in that threshold in that range, but you can't you don't see any movement. It's, there's nothing there, so we'll put that all the way back. We can even save a little CPU, possibly turn that band off. Turn that's off. That's off. Turn off a couple bands that we're not even using. There's no point. And if you want to see if you know it's actually doing something, you have to be able to hear the effect. Turn it off. Then turn it on. I think that sounds good. What y'all think? Let me know in the comments which one of these you would rather use. Would you rather use the compression method? Or do you like the EQ method for side chaining the, the kick to the instruments or whatever you want to side chain it to? And you can get crazy with this. You can, side, like I say, you can side chain it to the bass bus, the miscellaneous bus, drum bus. It's just whatever you want to do. Now, if you wanted to side chain it to the whole, like, mix like you wanted to take the kick and like i want everything ducking out of the way when this kick hits i think that's way 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 to the stream but let's say if you did a pre-master so this is the master before the master fader you take all of these we're going to turn them all off because we're going to route them to the pre-master so we don't want them routed to the master here and here, because this is uh, this is gonna go. Excuse me, this pre-master is gonna go to the master. So drum bus, pre-master, bass bus, pre-master, instrument bus goes here, miscellaneous bus goes here. Everything is routed here. That's gonna pose an issue though, because the kick is also routed to the drum. So what we're gonna do is unroute the kick from the drums and unroute it from the instra bus, which we had it slide chain to. It's not routed to it. You can't see any wires, which means it's not routed. Those little green long things that when you hit the button, those are wires. For those that don't know, this is meant to, you know, be a replication of a real mixing board. So we're gonna take the kick now. We're going to 
route it side so right click side chain to this track left click there you go we got to route it to everything it's not with the drums so let's see what happens we're going to do the e uh, for time purposes we're going to do the compressor method real quick fruity limiter we're going to hit the compressor right click pick your kick that ratio up eight to one Take that knee, put it all the way down, come down to about negative 30. Maybe less because we've got everything. Let's try negative 20. That thing is ridiculous. Let's go down to negative 30. Now you hear that pumping effect. That pumping effect. When that kick hits, it's Boom, smacking. And it's moving everything out of the way. That's too much. So we're going to come back down on the ratio, maybe 3 to 1. And then we're too far down on the threshold. We're going to come back up maybe 10, negative 10. We just want it right when it's hitting those peaks. Come back down a little bit more, 15, negative 15. Just a little bit more. A little bit too much turn it off to see if it's working that kick is coming through